Well everyone, it's crazy to think, but iPadOS 26.1 Developer Beta 1 is now out for us to test out and see exactly if Apple changed anything from the previous 26.0, if they added any features, if they squashed any bugs, or maybe they gave us something that we didn't think was going to come. So without further ado, let's see all the changes that came out with 26.1 Developer Beta 1. Let's get into it. But now, before we continue, if you do enjoy videos like this one where we keep you up to date on all things Apple, including all the new iOS and iPadOS updates, consider subscribing to the channel. But now, let's talk all things 26.1. Well, alright everyone, let's see exactly what's new with iPadOS 26.1 Beta 1. I am running it on my M4 iPad Pro, my 13-inch version, so you guys don't have to and have to deal with all the different beta issues that do eventually come with it, but this is what we're dealing with in terms of build size, and it's relatively large. In terms of a new beta update, this is one of the largest ones I've ever seen at 13.27 gigs. Give yourself 27 to 28 gigs of open storage if you do plan on installing this. But interestingly enough, there weren't too many changes with iPadOS 26.1 beta 1, even though it was a gigantic file. But just to go through the build numbers, see what that looks like, we'll go into our general, go into our about, and go into iPadOS version, and you can see that we're on 26.123B5044 capital I. So again, this is going to be the first one in a bunch of different updates for 26.1. Hopefully Apple does add some new things in here, but there were some new changes that I want to go over and we're going to talk about battery life as well. All right, so the first thing that we did notice was actually inside of the photos application. So if you go to the photos application and you pull up a video, the new media player is actually different. So instead of it just being like this bar and the liquid glassiness of it all, it's now turned into this like bigger bar and there's a little bit more opacity, but it's also a little bit more contrasty to, I guess, see what's going on. But it looks like they got rid of the liquid glassiness effect, at least for this part. It's still a little bit opaque, so you can see behind it a little bit, but this is just a new animation style for this new player. So if we press play, obviously it's gonna do its thing. You can click away from it, it'll disappear, and then it'll reshow. And then if I do wanna scrub through it, it'll get larger and show me where I am in terms of seconds and milliseconds on the left, and then how much time is left on the right hand side. So it's just a new media player kind of UI, something new that we did notice. And then the next updates that we saw were actually in Apple Music. So if we pull up Apple Music, there's a bunch of new kind of small quality of life updates with Apple Music. So the first one is gonna have to do with translation. But if you go into your Apple Music application, you open up a song that's in a different language, you now have the ability to translate the lyrics that are on here in real time. So you can see that this is a Spanish speaking song and these are the lyrics right here, but then underneath those lyrics, you see them translated in English. And they've added even a couple extra languages like Korean in there as well, if you do wanna translate them either to Korean or back to English from Korean as well. So those are some new ones that are added and you're gonna get this little splash screen when it first shows up to translate these lyrics in real time. A couple of the small ones that we see down here. So for instance, you are now able to skip a song by just a quick swipe. So you can swipe over here and swipe on the words to skip to another song. You can swipe on the album art to also skip a song. And then if you want to, you can go down here where the actual player is, swipe on that to also skip a song. So it's just a little bit more of a UI change and a UI difference when you are in there. And then another cool thing that was added from a UI perspective is if you go into your lock screen, and of course we know that if you tap on the album art, it'll show the entire album art on your entire home page, but look what happens to the clock here. So you can see that when I go to the whole album art for this song, it takes up the entire screen and then the time moves up here. And then again, if I just tap again, it'll make the time larger and it'll bring the album art down here. So again, just some new UI differences to Apple Music to make it just a little bit nicer to use. But that's pretty much it from a what's new perspective. Everything else is mostly just bug fixes and improvements to see what's different. But let's go over here and check out on the battery life on the iPad because battery life has been relatively good on 26.0 and hopefully it stays that way with 26.1. But if you go to view all battery usage, we got about four hours of screen on time on a day like Monday, day like Friday, 50 minutes of screen on time, day like Wednesday over here, three and a half hours of screen on time with only 58% of my battery used, meaning I can easily get, you know, six and a half to seven hours of intensive use like using LumaFusion all day. And here's some other tidbits about three hours of screen on time with 44% battery usage. So overall, battery life on iPadOS 26 has been really, really good. And then also you might notice that down here in the dock, you do get a live kind of notice that, hey, Safari's being used and you're getting notifications in Safari. You can tap in here to go exactly to where your Mac OS computer or your iPhone is using Safari as well. So just some small things here and there, but overall things are snappy, things are working. 26.1 seems to be on par with 26.0, but I would hold off installing this until the public beta comes out. And also there just aren't too many new things that are worth upgrading for, but that'll do it. Let's finish up the video. 
So that will do for this video, everybody. As you saw, there really weren't that many big changes, even though the update was pretty gigantic at almost 14 gigabytes of storage in order to take it up. But I don't know, maybe it's just Apple testing some things out. There is an inkling that Apple might re like release passport IDs under the iOS version of 26.1, but that still remains yet to be seen. Otherwise, let me know in the comment down below if you guys saw anything else that was worth sharing, a new feature, a new bug fix, or something that none of us saw coming. But that'll do it for this video. If you did make it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know you made it to the end. If you want to watch more videos like this one, check out one of these videos right here and stay tuned for my iPhone 17 Pro Max week long review because that's coming really really soon i've been loving this powerhouse peace everybody